and somewhere in the middle of that mm. is how I got a scholarship mm. um, to an American university mm. um, to do a correspondence course mm. on marketing. Mm -hmm. You mm. see what I mean? Mm. And and at the time, uh, it was an interesting course because of the fact that it also allowed me to travel. Mm -hmm. And it was organized by um, Grace Ogot, mm -hmm. who used to be this wonderful MP from, from years ago. Mm. Um, her husband, uh, Bethwell, mm. mm -hmm. was a person who got this deal mm. with the university to pick some young people. Mm -hmm. And I had gone to learn programming at their little college. Mm -hmm. And I was taken up as one of their young people mm. to learn this thing. Mm. So that became my thing for. Mm. And the beauty about this course was that um, it's fully paid for. Mm -hmm. um, it was an experimental course because they were trying to figure out if guys can can uh, learn in a correspondence way mm. from across the world mm. um, because that was a very new concept those yeah. days. Yeah, virtual was not as... Virtual was not a thing. It yeah. was not like it is now. Yeah. Um, so there were, we were test beds. There was 22 of us, mm -hmm. two of us from Kenya. Kenya. Um, actually, two of us from Africa mm. or oh, Kenyans. Okay. Oh. Um, six, from, um, six from Asia. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple from South America and a couple from Europe and America. Mm. So we are the guys. So they would fly us mm. to a place, to a destination, say mm. Mauritius, mm. for a class mm -hmm. every two months. Mm. And in the midst, we have assignments to do mm. and projects mm. to do mm. and whatnot. And mm. we have to come back and report at mm. the end of the two months mm. at a different destination, mm. say Accra. Mm. So you see me, I'm happy because... When you're traveling? I'm traveling. So this hybrid model is working well for you because on this end you're still working. Yes. But you're learning yes. and traveling. And I'm traveling. Mm. So things are working out beautifully for mm. me. I mean, it's not easy because I'm broke most of the time, <laughs> but it's working. Uh, and whatever money traveling. I'm making, mm. I, I'm doing my budget travel. Mm. Um, so some of the stories I'm ending up to m making mm. are like I went to Mali mm. um, in... in um, in a place called Gao, a city mm. in Mali. Mm. And I learned, you remember that story I was telling you earlier about how Kenyans used to like to go to the States? Mm. Now I learned mm. that in Mali, in West Africa, mm. those guys don't lie like that. Mm. It was they were not trusted. Mm. So people from West Africa, from that Western African region, mm. used to go to Gao, mm. and they used to go and, and uh, congregate there. Mm. They are hidden mm. in places mm. there. Mm. Then after that, they would wait for the Tuaregs. Mm. Hmm. Because Mali, Gao is right at the bottom of the Sahara. Mm. So they'd wait for these Tuaregs to come. Mm. They paid them $800. Mm. And they'd get onto a, onto a camel. Mm. And this would be the motion. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All the way up the Sahara Desert mm. to Tunisia. Mm. There's a place called Ceuta. Ufu. At the very tip of Africa. Yeah. So they would be traveling like that all the way to Ceuta. Mm. And the, some of them would die along the way mm. and so on and so forth. Oh. So I did some of that and then mm. I got off. I flew to mm. Tunisia to wait for them mm. and I met them there. Mm. Um, and I was able to track. So when they get to, to Ceuta, mm. you can see Spain. Mm. You're at the top mm. of Africa and now mm. you see Spain 25 <laughs> kilometers away. Mm. So what they would do is they'll pay another thousand bucks. Mm. A few of them would Changa, mm. pay a thousand bucks, mm. and they're given these rubber rafts, mm. and they're told, See ya. Bon voyage. Mm. So they get into these rubber rafts, and they try to get themselves across. To the other side. To Spain. Mm. When they got themselves to Spain, they would try and uh, cut their way into, into the fence that was created to block these illegal immigrants. Somehow they find, found ways. Mm -hmm. They go through a forest there in which I'm told the army used to allow people to be shot on sight. If you're in that forest as an mm. immigrant, you, you could be shot. And then now they get into Europe. So I told that story. Mm. It was picked up by... Mm. And David Macaulay published it. It was published in the Standard mm. and it was picked up by a few international media oh, nice. houses and whatnot. And so, so you actually become a, an actual correspondent. I became a correspondent mm. of sorts. Mm. I also became a stringer so that I was doing stories for guys who didn't want to do a story. Yeah. They didn't want to go to a place. 
Oh, you're yeah, the stay, one they, on the they ground. They stay in Nairobi, so they yeah. fund me. I go to, Zam- to Zimbabwe oh. to go and write the stories of So uh, your of writing how... actually becomes something. Yes. So mm. uh, and now I go to Zimbabwe to write about how uh, people are queuing for fuel mm. after Mugabe has just mm. with the, mm. the white people. Mm-hmm. Um, how uh, child soldiers are protecting the tobacco farms mm-hmm. that used to be white-owned. Um, Very intriguing. For the big men of, of, of Zimbabwe at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And the teenage wives, yes. um, sort of thing. Yeah. So I would now tell all these stories, mm. and all this is shaping me in some way. Mm. And I'm, it's making me a little bit more money, which I'm plowing back into multiple yeah. places. But you're also understanding. But I'm understanding the world, world I'm differently, development and, differently. Yeah. You see, so this is like a period where I'm doing that. Mm. Then at um, at some point, then um, I got a job with um, Mundia Moshiri, who who is a big. He used to have a big um, magazine uh, company, mm-hmm. um, the company that actually started Eve magazine, mm. Oakland Media. Mm. Oakland. Oakland, Oakland Media. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got to work for Oakland. Yeah. And at that time, because all of us were so filled with positivity about country, the economy was beginning to do really well. Mm. So I started a positive stories magazine mm. in conjunction with... Uh, Alfred Mutua's office at the time mm. and Oakland mm. and, and I was the editor for the magazine mm. um, and I did that for a while. Mm. At the same time, I was helping uh, Marcus uh, and Leo mm. um, on the drive. On um, Capital FM. On Capital FM yeah. to produce um, that show. To the, do the, a, a, it, it wasn't the jam. It was the jam. I think it was a drive. It was a drive, sorry. Yes. It was a drive, yeah. Um, mm. And, and uh, you know, uh, there, there were some two skits, some mm. two pranks they used to pull. Mm. So I used to help them to design mm. those mm. a little bit. Mm. Um, Man, you have a handful going on. So I've got stuff going on mm. in this. All, mm. And all of these things, uh, mm. you know, they, they are all adding value mm. Mm. Um, into my life. And and out, and likewise, out, uh, outwardly, they are adding value to whatever it whatever it is that you're whatever it is, is that I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also mm-hmm. adding value to there, and mm. so I'm making money and mm. enjoying life. In the midst of that chaos, multiple traces is starting to become a thing. Mm-hmm. It's starting to become a company. Mm. Um, I partnered with um, my friend Charity and my friend John, and we sort of start trying to build this thing, and it is extremely hard. Multiple choice, can you? Yes, multiple mm-hmm. choices now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see, multiple choices is a terrible name because of the fact that it was always being confused for multi choice. Exactly. But we, you know, we had a theory for this business mm. and we were trying to build. We, we started building blogs before there were blogs mm. here. Mm. We started building for mobile in mm. those days because mm. we had seen the future is coming. Mm. Um, so we tried, we tried, we tried um, for for quite a while. Um, it ran out all my savings. At one point, I'm walking <laughs> everywhere again. Mm. Remember, I was walking when I was doing the the selling for the yeah yeah for the for those guys. Yeah. Now again, I'm walking everywhere because I can't afford bus fare. <laughs> this is almost your. This is an, I, I've lost track already in terms of the we're number not, of business on, yeah, that you've invested in. No wonder they call you serial entrepreneur. Yes, exactly. Uh, because this is a, this is. Now you're in your late twenties. Now I'm in twenty six thereabouts. Yeah, so mid twenties. Yeah. You're already in business number something. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just trying. And you're just trying. I'm trying. And you're I'm trying. Running in fact, I think dry. Maybe my 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 epitaph will say he tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I and you <laughs> run dry a number of times again. Now. Again, I'm Here. dry. Yeah. I'm dry again. Mm-hmm. I'm walking everywhere because this business is not working out. Oh dear. Somehow, eventually, mm. it picks up oh good it picks up and mm-hmm. it now becomes viable yeah and eventually um some of the stuff is sold yeah um for a decent amount of money okay um and when we sell the business mm. uh, when we sell the products mm. for a decent amount mm. i decide okay you know what i'm quitting mm.